Hey everybody, welcome to live app review. My name is Matt Lockyer and I'm going to be uh, basically building a payments API uh, live for you today. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna build a payments API that um, we're not gonna use a smart contract. We're gonna do a payments API part two with a smart contract. So that's where we will like manage payments into a smart contract. But for this example, we're just going to use um, a thing in Near called an implicit account, which is basically a fancy way of saying it's an account like an Ethereum account. So when you make a key pair, on near you get a public key and a private key and an implicit account is an account on near that can receive near payments but um it basically has a a hash of the public key as its um as its uh you know implicit account id so kind of like the same way in ethereum you know you'd make a key pair and then you would do something with the, the, the public key, you do some weird hash thing, I can't remember, and you get the Ethereum address, 0x, blah, 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 and that's your Ethereum account. We're gonna use accounts like that to receive payments. So we're going to create a system where if we were running a service, we could take a username combined with a piece of metadata, so some, string or whatever and we're going to generate a unique deposit account so it's some user plus some event and then we're going to generate this unique implicit account id to which the user can deposit funds in and we will know it comes from them because we showed them that account in the first place so we're really just making like deposit addresses and then i'm going to show you how to use um basically how to how to generate those keys from a single key uh those private keys so that's part two we'll we'll look at how to do that and then also we are going to delete those accounts and we're going to specify like a beneficiary account so this is going to be a lot but uh we're going to get through it and i'm going to get started right now so here i am in uh, I was just in the, the near boilerplate repository. So you saw that from the first uh, live app review, live app review one. So this boilerplate is where I kind of clone uh, the repo to just get started. So I've cloned it into payment API. Um, so it's again, it's exactly this repo. I just cloned it into payment API. And um, I'm probably going to have to remove, uh, remove the remote so I don't, uh, oops. Uh, whoops, <laughs> I'm not even in Payments API. Um, so I'm gonna remove the remote so that I don't accidentally uh, copy it up because I haven't actually pushed this repository yet, but I will um, set a new remote for the new uh, Payment API repository under near-apps. So remember, we're, we're doing everything under near-apps here, just as app examples um, and these live app reviews. So what I've done is I've already done yarn and installed modules and tested this thing. Uh, we can test it again if you want, but I mean, uh, I basically did it. So what I wanna do is I wanna run the server. I um, wonder why that's not popping up. Oh, I think it's because I'm in the folder, not the workspace. So I'm gonna start the server and remember the, this is just from the first live app review example. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tear down a bunch of stuff um, on the front end and we're just gonna make it look like some payment website where, where the user is gonna say, hi, you know, I'm user blah, blah, and I'm trying to, I'm trying to pay my deposit to the event. So, so please give me a ticket, you know, that kind of stuff. So uh, I'm just gonna get rid of this stuff. So let's take a look at what we have on the front end. I'm gonna blow that up for you. All right, so we have this wallet sign in and all that stuff. We're not even going to use the wallet sign in. So let's go into the app. Uh, let's go into app.js. Let me blow that up uh, one time just so that you can. Okay, 
So let's just comment this out for now. We don't want to see the wallet, so that should disappear. Okay, great. Now we have this generate implicit account thing. Okay, that's good. But we don't have any way to specify like what kind of implicit account we're getting. So right now we're generating the random key pair on the client side and we're just generating an implicit account. We need to move that to the server side so we can generate an account where a um, a user would submit their username and the event that they want to pay the deposit for to the server. And then the server is gonna create the implicit account and send it back to them, like a sort of more of like a traditional API. So again, this is not, you know, your, your, your crazy crypto DeFi, blah, 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 you know, like everyone's got their own wallet. This is really just like a payment API. So this is allowing a business to take near payments and associate some sort of username and metadata with those payments. So it is what it is, but it is a, uh, it is a useful example for you to get to know a little bit about near. So let's continue to do that on the front end. So here, let's actually, um, we are not going to store any of this stuff like local keys or anything. I'm going to go steal some inputs from the, uh, from this place, uh, the contract. I'm going to go steal these. I'm probably gonna have to just like wipe this out. I'm gonna say, I'm just gonna say, you know, make a deposit to attend. So let's say we're gonna give out, we're gonna give out a ticket, but only after they've made a deposit. So let's say it's like a ticket to an event. We can just hide that for now. Um, actually, uh, control J. <laughs> I need to learn that hotkey. I usually just leave it open. Um, so make a deposit to attend and we are going to put in, we don't want to mount, so we want the placeholder to be the username. So you would already be authenticated with this service. We're going to have to assume because we're not going to cover that in this, in this thing. So uh, username, so we'll need some local state here. So we'll do use state. Okay, so then um, well, username that name was and then we're going to do the same for uh, the event name and is anyone gonna get mad at me for calling that all lowercase? Eh. Let's just even go more simple. <laughs> all right, set name, event name, set event name. Okay, cool, so that's our local state, so that's all we need. So we are going to go to name, doo -doo -doo, set name, and we're gonna go uh, event name, set, event name okay so that's covered that make a deposit to the event now we need a button button on click equals uh handle um create deposit or handle uh create address i don't know we'll just call it create account yeah Create account. So we're going to call the API and we're going to create an account. And then um, what's all this stuff? This is all managing access keys and stuff. So don't worry about that. Don't worry about local key state. We're just going to dump it. Um, so again, I have state management, a whole bunch of crazy stuff in here from the original boilerplate. But all we're going to do is... <clears throat> Excuse me. We actually don't even have to have a near connection. Um, we don't have to have anything. This is just a a pretty empty front end. Um, do we have to have a near connection? I think. We're gonna call the API. We're gonna make an account, and then we're going to 
send a payment to the account, and then we're just going to pull against the API. No, we're just gonna use the API. So we actually don't need much of anything here. So we're just gonna pull the back end. The real magic's gonna happen in the back end, but we're just gonna set this up, this keys part. We're almost there. Um, so we will need some local state though. So I'm gonna actually get an update here and this is going to handle create account. So const, we need a method for that. Um, so we'll just do name, event name for now. And we're going to deal with that and then we're going to update um, some state. Uh, let's update, um, you know, uh, what's it called? Count. Actually, it'll be a little easier to reason about here if we need to update multiple things. So the account, let's call it the, let's be really specific, the implicit account ID we're gonna get from the server. Um, and that's about it. So really we just wanna be able to say, um, oh yeah, not defined yet. Okay, so really we just wanna be able to say, um, you know, my name is Matt and I want to attend uh, the, the tournament or <laughs> let's steam it for East Denver. Oh, East Denver, okay, there we go. So we're gonna, we're gonna make an API request. So now let's actually get to the interesting part, <clears throat> the part involving near and let's go work on our server. So uh, I'm just gonna bring the console back up one more time. We can see our server is here. So we want to work on our server. I'm gonna leave the app and keys here for a sec. Um, but I'm just going to work on the server here. So when the server boots up, we have the contract name, um, we have the contract account, so we know uh, who we are, we're, we're the owner of this repository. And again, that information comes from config.js and this is uh, automatically generated when we uh, boot up this repository and the credentials are automatically loaded. If you go to server slash utils slash near utils, you'll see that the credentials for that account are automatically loaded for me, okay? Now, those credentials are basically just a private key for this, for this you know, master account or whatever you wanna call it, I probably can't say master, main account. Um, so it's, it's the credentials for the main account and the main account is uh, basically, it, it's your account. So it's your like, um, account that will uh, be the, I guess, like the main owner of all the sub accounts, at least the way that I'm going to, to set it up in this example. Now that's in near utils and it's pulling from the automatic dev account. Um, what I could do is I could generate some random account, you know, via seed phrase or whatever. I could parse the seed phrase and I could store it in an environment variable, but we're not gonna do that. We're just gonna leave this as it is for now and assume, assume that you can get your credentials in somewhere and at some point you have a private key. You can also generate a private key from uh, using the package, uh, the NPM package near-seed-phrase and you can, you can parse a seed phrase and get uh, this exact private key that you would have to pass into key pair from string. But anyway, that's how the main account is, um, is generated. And that's the account that I will be using uh, like inside, inside here from time to time. Um, what else do I wanna do actually? I think I actually am gonna pull in, I think I am gonna pull in the private key and use that um, I'm going to use that probably as a salt. So I'm basically going to say, uh, I'll just say like, I'll call it, 
account secret. So the contract account here is the, is the main account. And I'm just going to say account secret is this. So I'm going to use that as the salt because I'm lazy and I don't want to make another, you know, salt variable. And I'm going to have the server boot up here. We have some, some interesting kind of endpoints like has access key and a bunch of other stuff. So I'm just going to start by making a new endpoint. You do not need to have an access key to do this. Uh, I'm just gonna call it create account. And this is gonna create the deposit account. So it assumes on the request body that we have a few different things. So we have a name and event name. And that it's gonna kind of uh, strip those off. And then we need to make a unique, now we get to the cool part. We get to make a unique account ID, implicit account ID is where we're headed. Uh, we'll just, you know, cast it over here. Um, so we'll assume that that's where we're going to get to. And now I need to remember how to do this. <laughs> um, oh, I wish I hadn't deleted all that stuff, but thankfully I've got it here. So that's why this boilerplate is useful because there's a lot of this stuff involved here. So one of the ways that you're going to create a um, a, a random account is you're going to create it from uh, created the implicit account ID gets created somewhere. <laughs> I think it's uh, I think maybe in here through a helper. Nope. It is got to be in the keys component here. Uh, Yes, it's here. So that is how we get the account ID from a key pair public string. So let's go back to app here. So that's how we get our implicit account ID. So I'm just working backwards towards uh, an implicit account. Now the thing is, we need a consistent private key to generate a consistent public key from a name and an event name. So how are we gonna do that? Um, and plus, we, we can't have anybody else finding out the secret. So what we need to do is we need to take count secret out of the get config here. Um, oh, and we need, we're going to need key pair out of near API. So we're going to take account secret. And we're going to, I'm just going to move all this down. I don't want to keep scrolling up and down. You guys will get dizzy. Um, okay. So we are going to have the account secret uh, be our secret. And that is just a string plus name plus event name. And then what we need to do is we need to take the hash of all this. Now, I forget how to do this. So what I'm going to use is I'm going to use um, contra near contract helper. It already has this. And we do this uh, to create a deterministic account for uh, a two-factor key. So a two-factor key would just be like a second signing key. Pretty sure we're going to need the crypto package. So we are going to go down and we're going to find a piece of code that oh here we go okay so we put it in a key store here that's a little funky but do it okay and but we will need the tweet nasal package here too Let's check if we have it here. Nasal crypto is a default package, I think. Well, let's make sure we have those and let's just go grab this stuff and we will do the equivalent here. So it was all kind of there for us, but we just might need to change a few things. We're gonna do this instead. Key pair, let me just double check from seed. 
Near API, we already took key pair out. Key pair from string, base and code. Uh, I don't know if we have... Where is that? Double check. Ah, util serialized base and code. Okay, well, maybe we do that instead of buffer from uh, let's try this on. We get a key pair. Should have a oh whoops. No, that's the implicit account ID. We need that. Um, what are we doing here? Uh, here, returning. Oh, from string. Yeah, okay, we need that too. Yeah, we need this step, basing code. Okay, so we will go get that from near API JS. So. Okay, so we're gonna encode that and <clears throat> a key pair and then there's a key pair from string. Okay, and the implicit, uh, I believe the implicit, oh, whoops. No, we, we're going to need to actually wrap this in here. And then we're going to need to say that equals that. And then we can start to do things like this, but we don't have a reference here. And I think that's it. So let me see if I can call the API. That's a post call. Um, whoops. And I have a helper method from I have a helper here to just post JSON to the server. I'm going to go use that. <clears throat> All right, so we are going to oops, um, and we're just going to go oops, URL. Nope. Uh, no, it's 3,000. Oh, keyboard's jumping all over today. Okay. Now I believe we need to add some data. It all gets done for us. Okay, data is going to be what? Um, it's just going to be name and then, okay, and <clears throat> let's log out myself. Oops. Wait, I didn't see it. Wait, yeah. Classic. All right. Matt and actually let's just set this here. <laughs> this is gonna get tedious otherwise. Tournament X. All right. Post internal server error. Okay. Public key is not defined. Yeah, I figured something was up. Um, let's get rid of this, some of this stuff. All we really need is this sync and. I can't remember if it's just top level or if we need to go into 
bills to get public. Yeah, under utils, I think. All over the place here. Oh, there we go. Yay. Okay, so we got an implicit account ID that we can send funds to. All right, so now we probably want to check a uh, check for funds. So we want to check account, and let's just make this a get. Uh, it'll make it real easy. And actually, I've got all this convenient method pull from the body. Now we want to use some, you know, fancy near stuff to pull out the account. And we have some stuff from our config here, which should allow us to, we get some, the near connection here. We should be able to create a new account instance by getting the connection out of middleware near, no, no, no. Hmm. Oh, whoops. Um, everything is wrapped with a middleware actually called with near. So the middleware is here, and with near puts a near on the request object, which is great. Okay, so we can just use, for check account, we can just use uh, this equals new account, and we can use request.near.connection, and then the implicit account ID that we're inquiring about. And then what we do is we try to read the contract state. So um, what we do is you would say let state. So let's actually change this to something like count state. I know it's not supposed to be post blah blah blah, but whatever. You know, we just want to get her done. Um, so we try to do that, and then if there is no near in the implicit account, it's going to throw an exception. So let's. Um, Let's just warn on the exception for now. It's a little bit hacky, but we're going to pass back state. Um, come on. No, doesn't like that. Await. Uh, okay. Um, so we created an account. And uh, remember, that's the same account. If I changed it to like Matt1, it's a different account. So it's creating these uh, these these identical accounts when you have the same user information. So again, you're going to have to bounce the username and the tournament name and stuff. Make sure tournament is valid and check that the username is valid in your database. So I'll just put like a thing here. Um, This is like a warning, you know, that's stuff you got to do. Uh, not me. I'm just making a toy example here. <laughs> All right. So let's check. Uh, let's check an account. Um, so we created an account. Let's let's put some spacing in here. Um, and then. Uh, so when we create an account, we're just going to say. Um, that um let's let's set the state here and let's uh this one's gonna be fun um We get that result. Yeah.
I always have that success thing. I don't know. Call me crazy, but I just like to check J. I don't know. <laughs> okay, whatever. Uh, yeah, we're not gonna update the 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 React state thing, so we're just gonna gonna put it in this local state here. So let's we'll create it. We get the deposit address, and then we're just gonna do handle check accounts. Check. And then we're probably going to get back some state. So what we'll do is we'll just put, uh, uh, we'll just put balance here. All right. Let's see how that works. Almost done here. Check account. So we're going to do something here. Put the handle check account. Keep this post JSON check account. Need to pass in the account ID. And then if the result is positive, we means we're going to have result.state. So what we're going to do is we're going to do this is going to be, we'll just leave it as null, I guess. Um, and then we'll just state, okay, then state dot. I can't even remember what it is. It's like state dot balance or state dot amount. I don't know, but I'll print it here if it is set. Then uh, if it's not set, we'll just print zero. I do not know what that is. It's something. Um, okay. And get rid of these comments. So we would set the state here. So we're going to call check account against the server. Um, uh, whoops, named it wrong. Check. check. Yeah, it's undefined. Okay, balance is zero. Check account undefined. Let's see what happens here. So we've got the warning. Account does not exist while viewing. Okay, so this is what happens when an account doesn't have funds. Okay, now this is this is an implicit account on testnet. My server is connected to testnet. Now here's the cool part. So this funding account, remember, is unique to that user and that tournament, and I can create the private key. So I can get into that account because it was deterministically created. That's just a fancy word of saying you know, with a pattern. So we had our private key plus the name plus the event name that created a unique account for that user. That user doesn't know the private key, but what we can do is we can, <laughs> maybe I should send funds properly. We can send funds to that account. So on testnet, we just send funds to that account from this account and it says success. Okay, cool. And then we go back to our app and we check account and it says something's wrong here, uh, but it's different than before. So I know I, I, oh, I think I stopped the server. <laughs> I don't know why. So I want to check account. Uh, something's going. What is happening now? Create account, check account. Okay. I should have some sort of funds in that account. Here it is. State equals await account dot state, and then we pass state back. Uh, 
Oh, yeah, there it is. Okay, so state amount. Oh, that's why nothing was showing up because state.balance is nothing. Yes, I don't know. So um, let's go to uh, utils format. Parse near amount. Okay, so we're going to use that to basically parse that down to two decimals. So it'll look nice and pretty. Eight dot amount. That should print. Okay. Hello. Oh, but it's not coming through local state. Huh. Oh, <laughs> result dot state. That would help. Okay. And now we could probably get rid. Of it. Okay. So uh, just had didn't uh, take the state object out of the result from the server. Okay. So whoops, that was the wrong <laughs> wrong method. It's format near amount. Oh boy. Uh, long, long week. Um, okay, there we go. We got the balance. Okay, cool. Now, how come that checked automatically? Oh, I don't know. Oh, because the local state's still there. Uh, it's the hot module reloader with, uh, with parcel. It, uh, it keeps the state around. Okay, so now we got, uh, the implicit account. We have the balance in there. Now, how do we, um, how do we enter the tournament? Okay, that's a good question. Do we want to, now we want to take these funds and we want to actually destroy this account and we want to credit the master account. So who's the master account? Well, let's go check. Um, the, not, the ma <laughs> not the master account, the main account. Um, who is the main account? Uh, the main account is this person here with our dev account. Okay, so. What we're going to do is let's go get the balance from that. Yeah, that's a good idea. Actually, um, here's what we're going to do. We're going to add another check. So we're going to say, um, okay, we're going to say, tournament. Funds raised. Okay, you'll see where I'm going with this in a sec. So this could be like a really nice little transparent sort of, you know, charity thing. Like you don't have to say how much you raised, but basically um, we have the contract name actually somewhere. Yeah, it's the same. Uh, the contract name is the, the main account. So it is like the term, even though we don't have a contract deployed, it's just an account ID, right? So the tournament funds raised is this contract thing. And basically we're going to, um, okay, handle refresh funds. Oh, I'm just this. It's actually, no, sorry, it's handle check account, but instead we're gonna actually pass in the So, uh, yeah, this is kind of a misnomer now. It's like not really like any account we want to check. So we'll just basically make it account ID. And then here, what we're going to do is, yeah, we're just going to pass that. In. Okay, we're going to do that. We're just going to change that function to make it a little bit more general purpose. And this one is going to check the implicit account ID. And this one is going to check contract name. Okay. And then what it's going to do is, oh, we're going to need to uh, get us. This is going to kind of suck. Um, now we'll just uh, pass in some sort of like callback uh, method and we'll pass that to the callback. Uh, so it's just going to be implicit account ID and it's going to be that state and this one's going to be that 
uh, fund state, I guess. And we'll make that up here. Fund state. Then we'll do this here. Fund state, fund state. No. Okay, I think that should do it. So we just made that general purpose now. And so we can check the balance of this one. Uh, whoops, check the balance of this one. Handle refresh funds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. I renamed that wrong. That should be working, but it's not. Oh, whoops. How many do we have here? <laughs> okay. Whoops. This one works. Like that. Okay. We don't have an address. Come on. Create account, check account, pending. Whoa, account ID, is that it? Uh, change this data to account ID. Oh yeah, man, I'm bad at changing variables all the time. Yay, one and 190. Okay, cool, so we have 190 in the tournament funds. So what I want to prove to you is that uh, we can actually submit our funds to the tournament, which is going to destroy the funding account and transfer the one. Uh, remember, I, I went to my wallet and I sent one to this account. So this account is still sitting there, this deposit account. We haven't actually taken the funds into the tournament account. So the main account is this account ID here. So we made our contribution. Maybe we sent near from an exchange. Maybe we sent it from the near wallet, but we sent it from somewhere to this app. And this app gave me a, a deterministic address to submit funds to. And now I can tell the tournament, uh, I can tell the tournament to take my funds. So basically to, uh, to accept my funds. So basically, uh, I'm going to make a new endpoint and I'm just going to call it, um, you know, deposit count. So it is going to uh, pass in the account ID and it is going to do something with the account that is a little out of the ordinary. Um, we are going to have to set a, set a key store uh, we're gonna have to get the key store from the near connection, set a special key. It's gonna be a lot. Um, and we're gonna have to call the delete account method. So set key store for account um, using the term key. So the deterministically generated key that we got from here. We have to get this key pair um, somehow. So we're going to need the name and the event name, actually, not just the account ID. Well, actually, all we need is the name and the event name. OK, so we can just do the same stuff all over again. Um, let's put this into a little quick helper function. So get deterministic deterministic <laughs> All right. um, and we will just say uh, we're gonna take in uh, I'm just gonna make it really general you can expand it if you want um, okay then I'm going to Earn key pair. That's our near key pair plus the implicit account ID. And all I want in this case is implicit account ID. Okay. And Leave the reminder. 
And then in the other case, I want the key pair. I actually want, I want the implicit account ID and the key pair. Okay. And this would be the deposit account. We're going to deposit to the main account. So what is our main account again? It, okay, so that's the account ID of the beneficiary. So now we need to set the key store. So I have to remember how to do this. Uh, it is near dot connections signer. No, I'm going to mess this up. Uh, I have to go to look at the boilerplate again. Because under keys, we do some of that fancy stuff. Actually, it's under some utilities. We do, we do set the signer near connection signer key store set key. Okay. So we need to set the key for the implicit account ID. Um, so we're going to call the account and we're going to pass in network ID, make sure that's set. That from big. Okay, so just to recap, we have to set a uh, we have to set a signing key on the near connection. Otherwise, we won't be able to sign. We won't be able to sign a transaction as the implicit account. And what the transaction that we're trying to sign is delete account. So we're trying to delete the implicit account by creating a signature with, uh, you know, with this with this account ID. Not doing a great job explaining this, but I hope you'll see the point in the end. <laughs> this is really bad. Um, I mean, I think the only thing we specify here is, uh, yeah, the beneficiary. So we just delete ourselves. So we await, I don't even know what the result here would be, but let's just pass it through. And once we've set the signer there, we should be able to just call that method on the account because we will have a key in our key store. All right, let's give it a try. Um, so I will copy paste this and then I'm going to copy paste the heading here. And I'm going to say um, make tournament deposit handle deposit. We do not need any info in that one. Make deposit. So handle deposit. Okay, and then going to. Uh, my naming is all over the place right now, but that's okay. And we're gonna pass in name and event name. And I don't know what we're gonna do. We're just gonna log a result. Uh, well, we probably wanna do these uh, check accounts. So we probably wanna, you know, check, check the account of the implicit account. It's probably gonna be empty. Um, because the account got deleted, so there's no more near in it. Um, and we probably want to check the contract name account. Okay, so we'll check both of those when we're done. We'll log out the result. I don't know if it's going to work, but I'll make it work. Um, so, get the address. Okay, now we already funded it, but we're going to check it. So, okay, we've got a balance in there. Now, we want to check the tournament's funds. Do they have 190? And now we're going to make the deposit. And obviously something went wrong on the server. So let's see. Unhandled promise blah blah near is not defined. What? You're crazy. Oh yeah. Request.near. 
Okay, request on near connection, blah, 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 blah. Okay. Now, oh, another thing is happening. Server error, account does not exist while viewing. Oh, you think so? Oh, but it happened, it happened. <laughs> oh, okay, I get it, I get it. Okay, so it worked. We deleted the account, but then we went back to check the deposit address. So deposit account came back and it was true. And um, and we went through and we, we got an exception on the server and then we didn't return anything, I think, or something like that. So uh, here we go. I'll go ahead and I'll fund this again. Then one. So we're going to fund it one more time. So again, remember, this account is a unique account based on my username to some application in the cloud and some metadata, which in this case is a tournament that I want to join. And we just sent our deposit of one near token to that app. And now we're going to go back to that app and we're going to check that we have one near in that account. And then I just want to quickly check that if, um, if we go through and we, we swallow that error and we return date and then handle check account result.state, but state is undefined. So we call the callback with state or amount equals zero. Okay, how about that? So we'll just assume it's, if it fails, we're gonna do that. I'm gonna restart the server too. I'm gonna refresh this page. Go get my account, go check my account. We're back where we started. Go check the tournament funds, 191, and I'm going to make a deposit. It is pending and then it came back and then it called check account, check account, but the, the stuff didn't update. So why didn't it update? Server error, account does not exist while viewing. Okay, that's fine. But then we should have returned, we should return success to true and then state was, was nothing. So we returned, we should have set the state to be amount zero. This one has something, its amount should have been updated, but I don't know why they didn't get updated. So if you refresh, check account, get the necessary stuff. That is weird. Um, maybe we checked too fast? No, couldn't be. I want to know why it didn't update immediately. So let's go back and try it again. One more time. Let me just think about this. So delete account and then the funds get transferred. Maybe it doesn't happen in the same transaction. That could be, uh, well, yeah. You would delete the account and then maybe the funds are transferred in another block. Huh. Either way, I am going to set a timeout just to check. And I'm gonna do all this stuff in a timeout. And I'm just gonna set that to be, I'll just set it at three seconds after, just to be safe. And let's reboot the server because I don't like looking at that error. And Everything else checks out. So refresh the page, check account, check account. So we've got the one near that we deposited. Now we want to check the tournament funds. The tournament's making money because uh, I keep losing my money. Now I want to make a deposit, delete the account, check balance, check balance. I know you can do it. Still nothing. Okay. That's really weird. Those are set. Uh, wait a sec. Oh. 
I changed it to uh, <laughs> a lot of good it's going to do without that callback, right? Okay. So that is why. Okay. Mystery solved. So I, uh, I wasn't putting in the callback here. Okay. So let's do that one final time. So in case you're just tuning in, um, my username is Matt. Uh, my tournament that I want to enter is Tournament X. I want to play in this tournament. So I get a deposit address. I go to my near wallet or an exchange account or anything, and I send one near to this account. So this is, again, this is just using implicit accounts, no smart contract, no nothing. Um, on the back end, the server can create this account deterministically, so just a fancy word for with a pattern, you know, um, from its own account secret plus the name plus the uh, uh, vent name. So these two bits of information I am using as a seed to a hash to a private key to generate an implicit account ID that I can send here to, and I just did. So. That way the server is in control of all of these accounts and can differentiate who's who and who's made which deposits. So, um, uh, who's made which deposits to which tournaments. So it's username X tournament equals unique account ID, which is great. So now um, I want to go back to the app and I want to check the account. The account has a balance of one in it. So now I, I, I'm curious, so I want to know how the tournament is doing and make sure that I can check when they got my funds. So I see the tournament has 193. So what did we do here? We just hit the backend API with check account and check account tries to look for the account state. And um, if it throws an exception, it just swallows it here and then it will always return account state but sometimes state is undefined. So what we do is back in the app, we catch it and we call the, the state updating callback here. Uh, this is a function that I pass in that I forgot to pass in uh, when I did the deposit. But basically we call that with either result.state or some default state just to be safe. So just catching you know when this is undefined. Okay, and now the final thing to do is to actually deposit the funds. So what we're going to do is we're going to hit we're going to hit the backend API and we're going to tell the backend API that we want to deposit the funds. Now, of course, the server has full control over this account, so they could take my funds at any time, but I'm going to initiate the transaction from the client side. So I'm going to make the deposit to the tournament, which should leave me with balance zero and should leave them with 194 near. Okay, finally we'll get an update. Make a deposit, zero and 194. Awesome. Okay, so that's it. I'm gonna upload this video and this repository and tune in for part two of Payment API where I'm actually gonna do all of this functionality but inside a rough smart contract so we'll show you an example of doing this through contract function calls in, with deposits attached to them instead of these implicit accounts. Um, now, why do we make a differentiation and a distinction here? Well, implicit accounts, you can um, send, you can transfer near to them without doing a function call. So basically you're paying only for the transfer of the near itself. With, a, uh, with doing this inside of a smart contract, uh, as you would typically do if somebody wanted to like participate in a, you know, a token sale or buy a token or swap a token, you would be making a function call with a deposit of near, and that's a little bit different. So you're actually depositing near into a a particular um, function in a smart contract. So then that function is gonna is gonna keep track of you know. What was the name of the tournament? What's your what's your account ID? You know, it's going to keep all the the tracking there for you. So you get rid of the back end, um, you get rid of some of the back end liabilities. But the caveat here with the 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 part two that's coming up is that the user has to have 
an actual near wallet that is capable of doing function calls. So um, they would basically have to have a near wallet like this and they would have to sign into your application and um, authenticate with their near wallet and then basically make the function call. So it's a little bit more uh, involved for the user. Uh, as you saw, like the, all I had to do to enter the tournament was to send near to some account and then the the account uh, sorry the server here managed everything on the back end. Now this is the problem though is that the the uh, party managing everything on the back end is a, is like now a third party. There's extra liability, extra risk. Uh, you know this whole this whole thing hinges on this account secret never getting out into the wild or no employee from that company ever finding out what the secret is because it's basically the way to unlock all of the users uh, deposit accounts. Um, so there are issues and risks here that could be mitigated with a smart contract and you can add uh, some access control over the smart contract. You can add, um, you can use the near account system and like access keys to basically like kind of wall off permissions to various methods. So it's um, it's a little bit more robust, and it basically means that you know you as the tournament provider, um, if people are coming and making deposits, you have to do less work. So uh, anyway, I hope you enjoyed it. Um, you know we we uh, let the tournament make off with uh, with four near, um, <laughs> but uh, I I mean we can do. We can enter as somebody else and we can enter a completely different tournament if you want as well. So we just get a new account and, uh, and we fund that as well. So um, yeah, I hope you enjoyed uh, this demo. It's, it's kind of fun. It's kind of cool to sort of, you know, make a bunch of uh, keys and accounts and figure out how to uh, take deposits from them like this and see the deposits being made. Um, and then just see it uh, being submitted to the tournament there, and then the account is is destroyed again. So it's kind of cool. Um, and yeah, I hope you I hope you enjoyed it. Oh, one thing we should look at actually really cool just before we go is this the explorer, and we have to look at that dev account, and we have to see the transactions that came in. So, um, what happened here? Oh, where are all the near terms? That's really weird. Uh, that's really strange. Um, <laughs> where, are the, where are all the transactions? I don't know why I can't see them right now. Oh, and the account's gone. Um, it's so... Funny, because the near is definitely here. Uh, take a look on the wallet and see if it pulls pulls any history. No, that's super weird. Okay, so anyway, next time when the Explorer is updated, I will show you all of the transactions that were incoming to this account, and you should be able to see them on the Explorer. But um, you can also go and uh, you can check and verify, uh, you know, based on the, I guess, destroying the account and verifying the transaction receipt, you can store those transaction receipts on your database and basically store a receipt of all of the transactions uh, that you did. So um, once again, users fund these accounts and then you uh, basically tell them, okay, your, your funds are kind of in this escrow account. You want to make your deposit now? Okay, make your deposit. You destroy the account. Keep track of the uh, transaction uh, hash because in the receipts of that transaction hash, you could uh, make an RPC call and say, you know, show me the receipt of this transaction hash. And it would say uh, deleted account, blah, blah, and beneficiary was you. So kind of cool stuff. Um, once again, we are at uh, ETH Denver this weekend. And uh, if you wanna check our community out, you go to community or just uh, someone, <laughs> James Wah told me it's just near dash chat or near dot chat. 
that gets you into our Discord. You should definitely join our Discord and come build on Near. Lots of uh, grants and funding and bounties and fun stuff happening, especially this weekend at East Denver. All right, that's it for me, and I hope you enjoyed it.